Scratch it up. Mew, 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 so the group was formed in 2005 and it was originally called the Center for Computational Creativity and right now we've got eight members of staff and the research areas that we're working on are basically music information retrieval, music signal analysis, computation musicology, representing musical knowledge and also applications of these techniques to other areas like environmental sounds or biological sounds and We've got a couple of research projects like the IE Maestro project, which was on music education, and right now we're running the Slick Mem project, which is about semantic linking of metadata for early music. And one of the things that we're working on is music signal analysis, which is, can be said to be machine listening, and how to make machines understand music. And this is about understanding the notes in the recordings, uh, instruments present to separate sources. And one popular application of this thing is automatic music transcription, which is how to convert an audio recording into some form of music notation. And this is an example of uh, an audio recording of Mozart's sonata. So if we transcribe that, that sounds a bit like this. So you'll notice that maybe a few notes were missed here and there, but the system mostly works and we are able to actually transcribe music into some sort of notation. Another application that we're working on is on uh, optical music recognition and tablatures uh, for early music. So we have uh, really old handwritten tablature of lute music and we're able to do optical music recognition in that, detect the notes, follow the voices across and come up with a modern notation for each voice. And now I'm going over to Srikanth, who's going to talk about music prediction. Check. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, the basic question that you're trying to answer with um, uh, such models for analyzing music is why music sounds the way it does to us. I mean, why do, we, why do some of us like some kinds of music, why some of us don't like uh, the same kind of music, and how our music tastes develop and so on. So um, what the work we're doing with uh, this is uh, to, um, to, to, to use a certain statistical and probabilistic models and uh, train these on musical data. So for example, it's like saying that you develop a taste for music by listening to some kind of music over and over again, or depending on what kind of music you listen to, your uh, taste also develops. So, in the same way, we have these models which you try to train on some, um, some data on different kinds of sequential patterns like uh, pitch sequences or the kind of r different kinds of rhythms and see how um, these models summarize this information inside uh, it's, uh, for themselves. And so, uh, well, this can help you understand notions of uh, uh, similarity in style in music and uh, also, it's interesting to see, uh, I mean, it gives you different perspectives on uh, creativity and how um, actually a creative uh, work comes about uh, and, yeah, and also a little about familiarity and preference. So and another interesting thing that you can do with these models is that uh, you can, once you've uh, trained these models on some data to, uh, to understand this music, you can also uh, uh, have them generate music and uh, this is, I guess an interesting thing too. Um, this is an example of uh, a, a model that was trained on uh, Bach uh, chorales and So yeah, I mean, the idea is to uh, make such generations sound like the music that uh, they've been exposed to. And yeah. Right, so this is uh, another way of, this is one way of looking at music similarity is um, by going s simply by how uh, the signal um, looks, what, what the signal uh, looks like. So uh, you, uh, you have a, the audio signal and you, uh, you analyze it at each piece, you, you uh, break it down into uh, several components and components and then you use uh, uh, this information to um, understand notions of similarity in music. Um, 
pass it on to Daniel. So, um, apart from analyzing music, um, we're also interested in a ways of um, talking about music and actually um, formalizing it, descriptions of music, like how can we um, transport musical information over the web, how can we build data sets which are able to um, describe music in a way which is generic enough to describe s uh, several ways of music, but also s specific enough to uh, contain all the information about certain specific musical pieces. Um, we've done research um, in the semantic web ontology, and we've developed an ontology for melodies, chord progressions, um, and music. So it's a semantic web ontology for music, which helps to, well, to display and to actually formalize, write these melodies we've seen analyzed before. Um, another project of ours is to model similarity in general. We've seen the modeling of melodic similarity before by Shrikan. And in melodic similarity is just one facet or one aspect, what you can call music similarity. And we would all agree that probably different people in this room would have different ideas of how to describe similarity of certain pieces. You would focus on different aspects of the music and there will be in information of different cultures and of your context and of course also psychoacoustics which would play into your idea of musicology uh, and music similarity. So we try to build computational similarity models which include all these aspects of culture, co context, psychoacoustic mics and music perception. The question, the central question in modeling music similarity is which features of music are important, in which context, to what person, and can we make models which are generic enough to recommend music based on music similarity or to retrieve music based on music similarity. So you could use it in the end in a nice web app or something. In order to get this data and also other data, we've developed a system called Casimir, which is a game with a purpose framework and designed to collect data about music, basically annotations about music from players of the game. And I'm going to give a short demo of this. Um, so this is the Spot the Odd Song Out game. It's just the first login form. Spot the Odd Song Out is available on Facebook. You can all play it. Um, just search for Spot the Odd Song Out on Facebook. Um, and well, we are interested in some information about our participants because we want to relate culture and other personal attributes to the music data and uh, the music you actually give us. Um, so when we start this game, we come into a menu and we can have a nice avatar. We can just start a match. And then participants of this game, it's a multiplayer game, uh, can listen to songs. Oh, sorry, that was short. So it's three songs and there's some cases in which you hear three different songs and other cases where you actually hear only two different songs and one is the same and we use these cases to check if the one who's playing our game is actually making any sense in doing the decision. So the task here is to spot the odd song out which is the song which is different out of the three or the most different to the others. Um, so in this case we've got two which are the same and one which is different and I will choose that one. Um, in this case, we've been playing with other players which are in um, computer plays, and we've all selected the one song which is different, which is great, which um, tells the system that the participants make some kind of sense. Another task in this game is developed by uh, the K 
KTH Stockholm University, and it collects tempo data. So here you have to listen to a music clip, and then you can tap the rhythm to the music. Something like this, that's the task. So I wasn't very good at tapping, so I probably won't get many points. Uh, but the research behind this, I didn't get any points. This is my score. Um, but the task is to f collect information about how people tap tempo, if they tap to the quarter notes, the eight notes, how they perceive rhythm. And yeah, so we have developed this framework and we want to encourage other people, maybe also in this room, to actually um, contribute more modules like Spot the Odd Song Out or the Tap Tempo module to the game to make it more interesting. It's very easy. It's all based on HTML5 and JavaScript. It works on mobile phones and browsers. And yeah. Okay. So, as I said, we are very interested in collaborations in general as well as a work, uh, as a research group. Um, if, if you're an app developer and have any ideas to build new apps, contribute to the framework, if you've got any creative feedback to the other um, things we've uh, talked about before, about melodic similarity, about um, automatic transcription, uh, did you find anything especially interesting? Would you like to see something at your music school which uses those technologies? And yeah, would you like to also use the applications we've seen here in uh, like music educations. Uh, fi finally, of course, we're interested uh, in research and discussion of the stuff we've just shown you here. And yeah, please visit our website if you've got any further questions. Sorry, the website is mi.soi.city.ac.uk. So it's mi.soi.city.ac.uk, and you can just Google the MIRG group. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, City Uni. Does anybody have any questions?